I don't know about you, but I don't particularly like weakness. I vastly prefer to feel strong and in control at all times. I'm guessing most human beings would share that sentiment with me. So when St. Paul writes about a thorn being given him in the flesh, and then appealing to the Lord about it, appealing three times in fact, and hearing the response of, my grace is sufficient for you, for power is made perfect in weakness, there's a degree to which I don't like that response. I want the thorns in my flesh to be removed so I can go back to feeling strong and in control. But then I remember that all of these sentiments are built around a worldview that puts me at the center. When I remember that this is not how God th sees things at all, my view changes completely. God sees the whole thing all at once, a vast web of interdependency where we are constantly being called upon to minister to one another in ever-shifting, ever-evolving ways. And in that vast web of interdependency, we aren't always at our best when we're the strong ones, the ones in control. Sometimes we do our absolute best ministry when we're weak. I know it's counterintuitive, but when we're weak, we somehow, in spite of ourselves, can provoke things in others that otherwise might not come to fruition. And certainly when we're weak, we offer others the opportunity to minister to us in ways that may be upbuilding and beneficial for them, not to mention us ourselves. So I think St. Paul was on to something, as tough a pill as it may be to swallow. Power is indeed made perfect in weakness. We were never meant to be strong and in control all the time. Sometimes our role in the story needs to be the weak one, the confused one, the one who tried and didn't quite make it. When we happen to find ourselves in such a position, let's remember that God has not abandoned us, but rather that it's a moment when God is seeking to make power perfect in us.